Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PHP function in array. Now this checks whether a value is in a given array. However, it's a little bit more complicated than that may sound because we also have to deal with different data types and the strictness of our checking. We're going to be covering that and some more bits and pieces as well in this tutorial. Let's get into the code. So the first thing I need is an array. We're going to call this websites and this array will contain the website how to code well dot net and how to code well dot fm. We will also have google.com. The next thing I'm going to do is check whether a given value exists in this array. So we'll create a variable called site. And we will equal that to the string of how to code well dot net. What I'm going to do now is write a condition to check whether this site belongs in our website array. So to do that, type in underscore array. And before I add any of the arguments to this in array, let's go and check out the documentation. So this function has three arguments. The first one is the needle. Now this is the value that you wish to check. The second is the haystack, the array to check within. And the third is strict. And this is optional. So let's scroll up. Let's get to the top of this documentation. We can see that it checks if a value exists in an array. This is the link to the documentation, so please check this out for more examples. The first argument that we can supply is the needle. Notice that this has a mixed data type. This means that it doesn't have to be a string, it doesn't have to be an integer, it could also be an object or it could be an array. We're going to be checking a couple of those things in this tutorial. It is the searched value. We also have a comment on the data type here. If needle is a string, the comparison is done in a case sensitive manner. Okay. The second argument is the haystack. This is an array. And thirdly, we have an optional argument here, which is strict. It is a Boolean. If the third parameter strict is set to true, then the array function will also check the types of the needle in the haystack. It returns a boolean, so true if the needle is found and false if not. Okay, so let's go back into the code and start checking whether or not our website exists in the array. So as mentioned previously, the first argument here is the needle. In this case, it's the site. The second argument is the array in which we want to check against. I'm not going to worry about the third argument yet, but we will be using that later on. This returns a Boolean. So we need to have a variable that is assigned the return of the in array function call. So we're going to have a variable in here called found, and we're going to assign that the return of the in array function call. Okay, so what I need to do is check whether or not this is true or false. So let's create an if condition. We could do if found and then print out website exists else. We could print out website not found. We can also use a ternary statement that I've demonstrated before. Let's go ahead and do that to refresh our memories. So let's type print and then in the parentheses here, type found question mark website exists else website not found. Okay, let's get rid of this for now and bring that up to line seven. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say that all of this code is available and I've got a link to that in the show notes below. I've also got a link to a video tutorial that I've done demonstrating how to use the PHP local server for you to test this work. So once you've got all that set up, 
go to your browser and point to the in underscore array dot PHP file. Once you've loaded the page, you should see this message website exists. This is because that string how to cope well dot net is within that array that we supplied. But remember what it said in the documentation. When the value that you want to check is a string, it does it in a case sensitive manner. So let's try that out. Let's go back to the code. Let's say, for instance, this was capitalized. So how to code well dot net like so. So we actually have a different string, even though the website address is the same. This one is uppercased and this one is lowercase. So what do you think will happen when we refresh our page? Well, as I mentioned, the documentation states that it is a case sensitive check if you are checking against strings. So in this case, it should say that the website is not found. So let's go and test that out. Save your work and go back to the browser. After you refresh your page, you should see that the website is no longer found. This is because the string has actually changed in terms of its case. But what about numeric values? Let's go back to the code and start playing around with checking against numbers. So what I'm going to do is just copy all of this and paste it below. Instead of websites, we're going to have costs. And instead of the actual addresses of these websites, we're going to have one, the string of one, we're going to have two and we're going to have 7.5. Instead of the site variable, we're going to have cost. And instead of this string, we're going to look for one. Let's change that to be found one and found one. And then this is found two and found two. We must remember to change the variables within the function call itself. So this would be costs and this would be cost. Let's change the output here. So this is cost found and cost not found. So we are looking for an integer of one. Let's hit save and go back to the page. Refresh your work and you should see cost found like so. Now, believe it or not, this is actually finding both the string as well as the integer because we haven't supplied the strict argument. This is the third argument. So let's go back to the code and start playing around with that. For convenience, I'm just going to type print and then br like so, just to have a line break. Then what I'm going to do is copy all of this and paste it down below. We're going to change this to four and we're going to change that to four. This is a string, this is an integer and we're not going to supply the strict argument. Let's change this to found three and found three below. Let's change this to costs three and cost three and likewise down here and let's save our work. Let's just recap what we've done here. So in the example above, what we were doing was we were checking for an integer of one, but we didn't actually supply the third argument here. So this would have actually checked and found that one exists twice here. So both this integer and this string. This is because we didn't have the strict typing check. I'm going to demonstrate that by changing this to four and then checking for an actual integer instead of a string. This will still come back and say that the cost is found. So let's save our work and refresh the page once more. So here we can see the third time we have costs found, even though the needle that we supplied was an integer and we were actually checking against a string. Let's go back to the code so I can explain that in more detail. I'm going to add another print BR statement like so. And what I'm going to do is copy all of this and paste it below. We're now going to work on number four. So I'll change all the variables. And in this case, we're not going to change the values within this array. But what we're going to do is supply true 
as the third argument, which is checking for the strict data type. Now this will make sure that we are checking against an integer. And in this case, because we're checking against an integer, which is four, we will get the output cost is not found. Now, remember, we haven't changed the values in the array that we're checking against. We've only added the third argument, which is checking against the data type. So save your work and refresh the page. Here we can see this example has cost not found. This is because the cost is not a string and we are requiring it to be checked against an integer, even though the value is four, but the data type is different. We want to check against an integer and we have the value four, but that is a string. Therefore, we have cost not found. Let's just tidy that up. I'm gonna put a print br under here. As mentioned in the documentation, the needle is actually a mixed data type. This means that we can not only check strings or integers, but we can also check against arrays. So let's see if an array exists in an array. What I'm going to do is just delete that line. We're going to copy all of this and we're going to paste it down here like so. Let's change the variables to five and let's create a multi-dimensional array. So costs five, we're going to have an array in an array like so. So this is the first value, which is one. Then we've got four, we've got two, we've got 7.5, but we also have an array here where we have the values 10, 20, 30, and 40. And so instead of checking against an integer, we want to check against an array. Let's copy that and paste that down here. So the first argument is going to be an array. This is the needle. And we're checking the needle against the haystack which is this array up here. This array is a multi-dimensional array because we have multi-dimensions within it. We have a sub array and we are checking for that sub array. We will also keep the third argument running, which is true. This is checking for the data type. So we should come back with cost found. Before we go back to the browser, let me just tidy up this code. Let's put in a BR here. I'm also going to change costs and cost to be example. We're gonna copy that and I'm going to do a reverse search of cost and we're going to change that to be example. Let's replace all of those. And also I want to change cost as the text to be example like so. We're going to put example five in here and we're gonna scroll up here. This is going to be example four. So we're just tidying up the code as it stands. So we start with website exists. So we have example one and we have example two, example three, example four. And finally, we have example five. Let's save our work. So the website was not found because that was uppercase and we were looking for a lowercase value. We found example one, two, and three but we didn't find example four. This is because we were checking against a different data type. We also checked against an array and that example was found. If you found this coding tutorial helpful, then do let me know, give it a thumbs up and also ensure to subscribe to the How To Code Well YouTube channel so you don't miss out on future tutorials and courses like this one. If you've got a coding question, then please do ask, but do so on the Discord server. Go to howtocodewell.net forward slash Discord. As always, thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everybody. I'll see you again in the next tutorial. Cheers, bye.